Terminal emulators are one of my favorite things on Linux and on any operating system, really, mainly because I'm a nerd and I like to mess around in the terminal, which means that I like to play around with the tools that let me play around in the terminal. And the biggest one for that is obviously is the terminal emulator. Now, my favorite terminal emulator of all time is Alacrity slash Termite. Now, Termite is dead, so Alacrity has kind of taken the crown, but... I'm always on the lookout for new terminal emulators to try out. So today, we're going to be taking a look at a terminal emulator called Tabby. Now, Tabby proclaims itself as a terminal for the modern age. And if you go to the website for Tabby, you'll see something that looks like this. Now, usually when it comes to web design and all that stuff, I'm very much a minimalist. I don't care for flashy animations. So... Uh, all that stuff could go away and I'd be perfectly happy, but we're not here to judge the website. We're just going to take a look at some of the features that Tabby proclaims that it has. So if you scroll down here a little bit, here are the things that it says are the important things. So it runs on Windows, Mac, and Linux, which is good. That means if you have a need where you use multiple platforms, you can use the same terminal emulator across all of them, which is good. It has an integrated SSH client, which is pretty weird for a terminal emulator. To be honest with you, most terminal emulators are just terminal emulators. They don't have anything extra on top of them unless they're specifically built to do something different. Tabby has an integrated serial terminal. It supports PowerShell, PS Core, WSL, and quite a few other things. Uh, it has full Unicode support, including double with characters. It allows file transfer from or to SSH sessions via SFTP and Zmodem. It has an absolute ton of theming and color schemes. I'm talking like at least two dozen of them. There are a, a lot of them. I'll show you those later. Tabby has fully configurable shortcuts and multi-chord sh shortcuts, which means I believe that it allows you to do something like key chords. Uh, it remembers your tabs and your split panes. This feature is, it's like they were talking to me when they wrote this and they created this. I don't really use tabs in my terminal emulator. I use Alacrity. It doesn't have tabs. Tabs really aren't something that it really needs. But I also love things that have tabs. And I also love things that remember your tabs when you close and reopen them. Everyone knows I have a love affair with Crusader. Crusader remembers all of your tabs. It's a file manager. To have a terminal emulator that remembers your tabs and your splits is kind of awesome. Uh, proper shell experience with Windows, including tab completion, which if you're on Windows, apparently you don't get tab completion. Is that a, really a thing? I don't know. I'm not a Windows user. If that's true, poor, poor Windows people. Uh, integrated encrypted container for SSH secrets and configuration, which is... Again, really cool. It goes along with the SSH client, which means basically that it's going to allow you to save your passwords and passphrases and stuff, which is nice. Now, there's a whole bunch more stuff here on the website, which I'll link in the video description, but enough of this. Let's take a look at the actual terminal emulator. This right here is Tabby. Now, this is not the default theme of Tabby. I've changed the theme because, of course, I did. That was, of course, the first thing that I did. I mean, obviously. And it looks okay. I would say. I'm not a big fan of the big bar at the top. You guys got to remember, I'm used to this kind of thing. This is what my terminal emulator looks like. This is Alacrity. There's no frills. Uh, there's no bar at the top, nothing like that. That's just Alacrity. You know, now obviously, people who use Tabby or Console or Gnome Terminal in an actual desktop environment, you're used to having Chrome around your, your terminal. You're used to having the window controls and stuff like that. I'm not used to that, so that's the first thing I noticed. It's not that big of a deal. And that's just my personal thing, you know what I mean? So, anyways, tabs up here along the bottom. And this button here, if you click on this, this is where it allows you to select a different profile. So it has all of these access to different TTYs, which are the serial terminals. And it goes up to what I believe is, actually it does 31, and then it goes into a couple others. And then it also has the ability to use different shells that you have installed in your system. So I could open up a tab with bash. So here's a tab with bash. I could open up a tab with a different path to bash. So the user slash bin slash bash. Technically, these things are exactly the same thing. You could also do one with regular shell. Born shell, I believe is what that's called, right? Uh, and also, 
for those Tmux people out there. It has Tmux right here. Now, I'm not sure if it comes with Tmux or if somewhere along the line I installed Tmux and don't remember it. I don't think I did. So it's possible that Tmux comes built in. If so, either way, it allows you to use Tmux from this dropdown and then you can do the things that you would do in Tmux. Uh, I'm not a Tmux user, as you can obviously tell. I did a video on Tmux when I first started the channel. I'm pretty sure I was wrong about 100% of the things in that video, so uh, don't go watch it. It's horrible. It's really bad. Uh, ZSH is also installed on this computer, so that's also an option. It's also the user default up there. Right here is where Tabby allows you to mess around with SSH in an SSH client. So if you were to click on one of these... It would ask you for your passphrase, which I'm not going to enter right now because it actually shows the characters. Oh, I, I, I think it actually does blur it out, which it does, but I'm not going to do that anyways. But anyways, you would enter your pass key and then you'd be connected to uh, GitHub in this case via SSH, which is really nice. Now, it seems to work better with things like websites and uh, other servers and stuff like that. Connecting directly to your GitHub account seems to be rejected, so I couldn't get that to work. But maybe I'm just doing something wrong. Probably if you're managing like a VPS or something like that, that's where this SSH client would really truly shine. Now, it also allows you to do things like splits, so you can have splits left, right, up, and down. There's obviously key bindings for all of this stuff. Uh, so you can do a split like that. You could do another split like this if you wanted to. To And that's not where I, where, where I wanted it, but... I could also do to the right. So you could have a whole bunch of splits. If you want. And all of these are Tmux, obviously. Now, Tmux obviously will do its own splits if you wanted to do that. Uh, but this is doing a split in the terminal. So you have separate Tmux sessions going. And they can be dragged like so, so that you can make them bigger or smaller, however you want. What I don't see is a, a way to drag them to different positions. So I'm assuming that there's probably a way to do that. But as far as I can tell, resizing them is the only option that you have. Now... In terms of settings, because this is where supposedly Tabby shines. There are a lot of settings, as they say. I don't say that it's infinite, of course, but, you know, they got to mark it somehow. So there are a ton of options here. I'm not going to go through all of them, but the there are quite a few. So there's a lot of appearance settings here. This is where you're going to choose the font and the font weight and the cursor shape and stuff like that. There is uh, the... Profiles and connections. This is where all the built-in connections that we just went through with this button here are. And you can create new profiles as well if you want to do that. In the terminal section, you can choose the terminal front end, the scroll back, whether it draws bold text, and some settings for the keyboard and mouse, along with the clipboard as well. Now, here are the color schemes. And as I said, there are a ton of them. So I'm going to actually just scroll down through these. I'm not going to pause too much there is a color scheme here for pretty much everybody here there are a ton of them i'm just going through them really slowly and i'm not even halfway yet yep keep going still going yep still going uh, there, there's dozens of them and this is like heaven for me because i love themes and i like racing things and if your terminal emulator comes with themes and it comes with this many themes that's awesome it's really cool obviously any of these are editable edit editable. So if you click on one and you go back up all the way to the top, you can click edit and you can change any of the colors that you want and you can rename, which is basically the equivalent of creating your own color scheme, which is nice, right? So that's really easy. It also has a config sync option so that you can sync your configuration to different computers or different operating systems. This is where you would edit all of your hotkeys. There is a plugin system, so you can add plugins. There's not a lot of plugins here, but there are some. Things like there's a, a Clippy plugin where it will annoy you or whatever. There, this is where you'd manage your SSH stuff. There's not a lot of options here. Most of the options for SSH are actually when you connect to an SSH through their client. Uh, the vault here is an always encrypted container for secrets such as SSH passwords and private key fat passphrases. So this is where it's going to set up the ability to remember your SSH passphrase and stuff like that. And then finally we get to the window and this is where most of the stuff that I would change is actually located. So the first thing that I wanted to do was move the tabs to the bottom and remove the 
window decorations. So it actually is going to require a restart. And that's going to allow me to show you one of the things that's really kind of annoying. So when you open up Tabby, there's a loading screen. Yeah, there's a loading screen. Now, as you can see, it does remember your tabs. It does not remember if you have the settings pane open. So that's a little weird, but, it, you know, whatever. Another thing that you notice, if, if you guys see down here along the bottom, you see how slow that was? Let me let me move the tabs back up to the top. Maybe you can see that a little bit better if the tabs are along the top. So we'll put the tabs back on top. And if I cl open up a tab, see how you, there's like a little stutter there. And if I close it, there's like a an animation stutter. So when I first started using Tabby, I noticed that. I was like, man, this is really slow. And it is. Like the animations here are just they completely make it feel like the terminal is just slow. It's all get out. The good news is you can turn those off. So if I turn those off and then open up, you can see how much faster that is to open up and close tabs. It's just, they're gone and they're, it's gone. It's gone. You know, that's so much better. So really they need to disable animations by default. Now it's also possible that this is a problem with me in a term in a window manager. Maybe it's a window manager thing. And because I'm using something like PyCon, maybe it's has some kind of incompatibility there or something. I don't know, but yeah, out of the box, those animations are enabled and it makes the whole experience seem just super slow, really sluggish. So the actual usage of this terminal is kind of cool. And I think some of that is just me being really excited by the fact that it remembers your tabs. Uh, it does remember all of your splits and stuff, which is nice. So if you have a split in one of these terminals, even if it's not Tmux, so if I have a, a split here and then close it, it does remember that you had a split here and that's really nice. So if you, you know, have a preferred layout that you want to use every time you open up terminal, that's cool. Now, all of the stuff I really enjoy, there are a few things that are kind of annoying me. So the first one was that slowness. So get rid of the animations and it kind of takes away that. The second one is that loading screen. That loading screen is just, no, I don't want a loading screen on my terminal ever. Now I understand why it's probably there. It's probably getting all of your history and all of your tabs and stuff like that. And that's the reason why it's slower to start up. I understand it. And I would probably put up with it if I needed some of these features, but it still bugs me. And the third one is that it does ask you for telemetry by default. You can turn it off, but it is opt out instead of opt in, which kind of bugs me. So those are the three things that kind of just kind of bug me about Tabby. Now, in terms of speed and stuff like that, I haven't noticed the actual emulation of the terminal to be slow or fast. I haven't done a ton of stuff in this, so in terms of compiling and stuff like that, I haven't done any of that. But just running regular programs, I didn't notice it being any slower or faster than anything else that I've ever used. So take that how you will. I will say that the theme support is not as great as I thought it was. So if we go back here to the color schemes, if we choose a new color scheme, it will show up in, oh, wow, that's really bright, right? Uh, it will show up in the terminals, but it will only do so if you've selected this one here. So by default, from theme is selected by default, and if you choose that, then all of them always look like this. If you want to use the actual color scheme that you just picked, you'd have to choose this one. Now, another thing is, is that it, there doesn't seem to be a way to change the actual main theme from what I can tell. So these only have to do with the terminals themselves. It doesn't have nothing to do with the Chrome around the windows, so like the tabs and stuff. I can't find a way to change that. Now it's possible that I'm just missing it. Maybe there's a spot that I'm just kind of blanking out on, uh, but I don't see a way to do that. It's not a GTK or QT theme, so it's not going to inherit your theming from the rest of your system. It's going to have this blue color scheme. And again, I don't really see a place. Oh, wait a minute. Never mind. I found it right there. Oh, no, not really. That's those aren't themes. That those are paper. That's just like a light theme, standard acrylic background. And that just allows you to have opacity on. Okay, so those aren't. I mean, I wouldn't really consider those. I mean, that one there's a theme. Those are just versions of the same theme. So you get like shorter tabs, which I suppose is nice. 
So I don't see a way here to actually change the theme color. I might just be missing it. It does have a configuration file, so if you wanted to configure this via a configuration file, if you're used to doing it that way, you can do that if you want. So uh, that is Tabby, a very brief look at Tabby. Overall, I'm, I have mixed feelings. The whole remembering of tabs thing is really cool, but it has a downside of having that stupid load screen. So I could probably just take that or leave it. As much as I like applications that remember previous states, I kind of have a thing for that kind of stuff. I really don't know if I need it in my terminal, first of all. Second of all, it does slow things down a bit. And I don't know if I like that at all. So in terms of the rest of it, uh, it's it's okay. It feels like an Electron app, to be honest with you. Some of the stuff is kind of slow and sluggish. The animations are definitely completely unusable in terms of like being there. I don't you don't need them. Turn those things off by default. The customizability of it is really nice. It does have a ton of customization options. So if that's something that you like, this is an option for you. It does seem to be fairly stable. I didn't have the problems I had like with Blackbox when that first came out. That was very crashy. This one hasn't crashed at all. So that's nice. And it works fairly well. The added session and profile manager stuff where you can use Tmux and different shells and the serial terminals and all that stuff. That stuff's really neat. I don't think that I need it because I can just SSH in the manual way like a nerd. But having that SSH client available to you and having the ability to have it remember not only your save state, but also your passphrases and stuff like that, that's really nice. It's definitely something that is beyond a traditional terminal emulator, which is good because a lot of terminal emulators are just terminal emulators, which is fine, but they don't really add anything to the conversation. So that is Tabby. If you have thoughts on this, you can leave those comments in the comment section below. I'd love to hear from you. You can follow me on Twitter, at LinuxCast. You can follow me on Mastodon or Odyssey. Those links will be in the video description. You can support me on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast just to go all these fine people. Thanks to everybody who does support me on Patreon and YouTube. You guys are all absolutely amazing people. Without you, the channel just would not be anywhere near where it is right now. So thank you so much for your support. Thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll see you next time.